accessories are a massive part of photography. I know a lot of purists out there will be like, no, you need a camera, a lens, and a subject. That's it. But why'd you put the camera in? Why'd you put the lens in? So today I want to showcase a few accessories that help me take photos and also for YouTube stuff and making a bit of video. Let's get stuck in with what I think is my most used accessory. This. As this goes on your rucksack strap on the bag and then you have your camera and it slots in and your camera can stay here mounted on your like bag. Uh, it's really handy and then if you have it on your left strap and you shoot with your right hand you can just kind of push in on this little clip and you have your camera ready to shoot. If I'm out shooting with, let's say, my G9 and my 100 to 300, I can have this clipped to my bag, and then I have more space in the bag for a waterproof jacket and snacks and that kind of stuff. Uh, the actual clip on the bottom of the camera is Arca Swiss plate compatible. Uh, but my tripod, which is an Arca Swiss tripod, it can grip onto it. And I'm a big fan of that because that means I can take my tripod with me and I can take my camera off my strap, slide it into the tripod, everything's fine. But as well as just keeping your camera out of the bag, it just means it's always there and you can have it whenever you need it. It does kind of scream out to the world, hello, I'm a photographer, this is a fancy camera. But yeah, it does the job in keeping my camera where I want it to be and keeping it ready to shoot. It's obviously a clone of the Peak Design one, but it does its job very well and for about 12 euro, uh, you can't go wrong as far as I'm concerned. And they have them in nice colors. So I have this silver one. Uh, on my main bag, I have an orange one because I was kind of going for a green and orange theme because Ireland, brilliant, brilliant accessory. The second accessory is something I use when I'm filming my kind of photography POV videos, right? Where I have a GoPro and it's showing you me taking photos. I've tried a bunch of GoPro clips over the years. I've tried ones that clip onto a rucksack, kind of like the clip I just showed before, but I find then you're like, you're, it, the, the actual point of view you get is kind of weird. I've also tried the harness ones and I feel like I'm a security guard at a shopping center or someone wearing a body cam. So this is my solution. I, I, I didn't really show it very well. Essentially, it is this magnetic clip by Ulanzi. It is a GP17. You get a few pieces. You get the magnetic clip for the GoPro. You get another magnetic clip that clips onto GoPro mounts. And then you have this. So the actual magnetic clip for GoPro mounts is on my motorbike helmet, and this clips onto that. I've driven fast with that on, and I've not had an issue with the GoPro falling off. And then this goes under like your hoodie or your jacket, and it clips on, it's on pretty strong, and I feel it gives a decent angle for your footage. Now, if you've got a jacket with a big zip, that's not ideal, but normally I'm just out in a hoodie, and it's pretty handy. And it's also quick to slip on as well, normally, Normally I carry my GoPro with me if I'm just out about taking pictures because if I'm doing a review of a lens or something I might want footage of me using that lens and this is a much easier thing like putting this on I put it around my neck I tuck it in and then I can clip the GoPro to me that's so much easier than putting on a harness it's so much easier than unscrewing a mount that's on the GoPro to stick it onto another thing to then stick to the rucksack. Yeah, if you're after a GoPro mount, this is ideal. Now, if you've got kind of loose fitting clothes, it does kind of jiggle around a bit. I found if I've got a rucksack on, that mitigates that quite a lot. And also just the smoothening in this GoPro, you know, it's not an issue. This is a GoPro Hero 9. Accessory number three isn't even really a camera accessory necessarily. It's um, small notebooks and a little tiny pen. This is, um, I mean, if you live in the UK or Ireland, you're going to know what a big four color pen is. I don't know if they're a thing in the States. Um, let me know. <laughs> this slips in the front pocket of my slingshot bag, or I can stick another one in like another bag. And they're brilliant if you're kind of sat waiting for light to get good. You know, if you're sat there in golden hours in like 20 minutes, I like to just sit there and kind of sketch things out, plan a few videos, just kind of dump information onto the page. And then I bring this back home and I kind of sort through it. And then if it's a YouTube idea, it goes into Notion. If it's a photography trip idea, that gets developed out again and again in paper. I'm just trying to get a bit more tactile with pen and paper. Like I shoot photos through an EVF or a screen. I edit them on a screen. I consume entertainment on a screen. And I feel like sometimes my eyes could do with a bit of a break. It's just handy to have a bit of pen and paper, particularly if you're chatting with another photographer and they mention a place they've been to or if they mention a bit of gear, you can just jot that down and then you can go and look it up later. As opposed to 
I suppose, sticking it in the notes app on your phone and then just not opening it. The key is actually to go back and then revisit what you've written. So here I have like sketches for YouTube videos with possible titles and a quick sketch of what the thumbnail would look like. Um, accessory number four is a bit camera specific, but also not at the same time. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that I absolutely love my EM5 Mark II by Olympus. Um, it's 16 megapixels, which I think if you're not doing a lot of cropping is completely adequate. And I absolutely love the tactility of all the dials and buttons. One thing I don't like is how it feels in the hand. For a while, I was rocking this 3D printed grip. Uh, it's a really good model, actually. I will put a link in the description. Uh, it even has space here for you to store SD cards, or micro SD cards. I suppose it's customizable in a sense in that you could actually change the 3D model itself, or you can just print it with a color that you like. Um, I found after a while, particularly if I was using my gloves, they catch in the layer lines of the print. So I found this on AliExpress and all this does is it gives me a bit more grip when holding onto the camera and I kind of like it. It also has an Arca Swiss plate so I can just slide it into the tripod but we also do have a tripod thread on the bottom so I can pop on, you know, a different tripod plate if I wanted. I find the best place for your camera is your hand. The second best place is somewhere where your hand can get to it quickly and the worst place for your camera is in the bag. Uh, if a camera is not comfortable, you're not going to want to have it in your hand all the time. And with this in my hand, I can just grip it by kind of balancing my finger between the lens and the grip. It's super comfortable to hold around, and then when I come to actually shoot with it, I've got a nice big grip to hold onto. Um, so for any camera, really, there's options out there. Uh, I've not had much luck finding one for my G9 or my new camera, which I will talk about a bit at the end of the video. So there's a bunch of options out there for every camera, really. Um, small rig make great cages for cameras, so you can mount more lights and microphones and screens. You can really turn it into a bit of a monstrosity if you want. I prefer this kind of plain unstated look, but if you are doing more like kind of proper video, then you might want a cage so you can mount an external screen and like one of them handles at the top and that kind of stuff. The grip for the EM5 means that I am more inclined to go out and use this camera and I love this camera. Accessory number five is actually my tripod. It's the small rig CT10. It's their like budget aluminium tripod. I mean, it's a tripod and it's pretty flexible and that you can get to a bunch of different angles with it. Uh, you can also take off one of the legs and use it just as a monopod, which might be handy if you're doing sports photography or that kind of stuff. But what I like about it is the fluid head, meaning I can get really really nice and it tilts and camera movements. Uh, I have a few small rig accessories, um, not necessarily because I'm buying them because they're small rig, but because it's a name that I've heard good things about and the bits of gear I have are quite good. The microphone you are currently listening to is a small rig little shotgun mic um, and it even has a mic in so that I can plug in a lav mic or even my wireless lav system I can plug into that and then you know, if my lab dies, I can go back to the shotgun mic, which is better than the in-camera mic, or if it's a particularly windy day, um, I can just use the lab mic and that's it. I get a blend of the two. It's all about versatility in the edit for me. That's why I shoot raw files. I like the versatility in the edit. Those are the five accessories that I use for taking photos, for making videos, just whenever I'm out and about with the camera. If you're new to the channel, I, can t I tend to just have a minute or two at the end of the video where I talk and give updates about things. Uh, I've been kind of out of action for about two weeks. Uh, I had a real bad flu for a week and a half, and then I uh, was driving my maxi scooter, and I got a flat tire in the back. Luckily, I was going slow through a little town, so I felt the wheel go, and I managed to maneuver into the hard shoulder at the side of the road and wait to get rescued. If I was going at speed, I would be smushed. So... <laughs> um, that's why I'm filming indoors and it's such a lovely day outside. I wish I could have gone out and gone somewhere on location, but I don't want to walk to the river again. I've kind of done that place um, way too much. Yeah, when I get that tire fixed, I have a new tire in the post because the current tire, it's a bit bald anyway, and I, I didn't want to plug it and have a half bald tire that I was, you know, driving on. Like for all it's a scooter, it's a really fast, big scooter. Uh, it's essentially an automatic motorcycle. I did get a new camera. And the reason I got a new camera is because You'll notice this hasn't really appeared on the channel recently, my G9. Now, if I turn it on, it works. I can look through the EVF, it'll detect my eye, and it works. Screen doesn't work. Now, for anyone that's asking, yes, I have tried pressing the, like, what is it, the L, that, like, function button there to cycle through, I know it's definitely, like, a problem with the screen. I called around a few places to get a quote for a repair, and all the quotes were 
in my opinion, incredibly expensive, and I think, yeah, anyway, so it cost, it was going to cost a lot to repair it. And for less than the cost of a repair, I managed to score myself a Lumix GX8. And that's what I'm filming this on. Now it has a few quirks, the mic in is a 2.5mm instead of like a nice 3.5mm, so I had to get an adapter for my mic. And there's no stabilisation when doing video. But in terms of stills, I haven't noticed a particularly big difference between the sensor on the GX8 and the sensor on the G9. My G9 still works completely fine through the EVF, I just can't use the screen. And 9 times out of 10 when I'm shooting stills I don't use the screen, but for that, you know, 1 time out of 10 for a long exposure, or if you are taking pictures at a weird angle and you kind of want to, you know, um, I miss that screen a lot. Maybe one day I'll actually buy the replacement screen online and repair it myself, but that's assuming it's the actual screen that's the issue and not like a ribbon cable inside the camera. That's why the past few videos on this channel were filmed with my EM5. Now, I love my EM5, but it only does 1080p video. Now the 1080p video it does is really nice, the stabilization is amazing within this camera. So I treated myself, I got a Lumix GX8, I got a really good deal on it, uh, it was in well used condition on MPV and all there is is a few scuffs, everything works fine. It's a lovely camera to use, I actually like the rangefinder style, and I got a new lens, primarily for video but also because I'm trying to get better at shooting at different focal lengths. I got the Lumix 14mm f2.5 and I find that right now, because the GX8 when you film video it crops in a little bit anyway, I find that gives me a nice kind of space around myself and also if I'm filming in not great light I can open up all the way to f2.5 and I let light in. Uh, I'm going to review both of these things individually in time as well. Other upcoming stuff, I am going to be reviewing the Lumix 20mm f1.7. I have that whole video coming on do UV filters alter your image. That's me, I'm still going to try my best and do weekly videos. I might even do a few extras here and there to make it so I still have like 52 by the end of this year. Let me know how this video looks. Um, I know the lighting in here isn't great. I am working on building a few softboxes um, because actual softboxes are really expensive and... <laughs> I like budget things because I have a tight budget. Uh, I am curious, genuinely, how does this video look? Uh, have you, Did you notice a difference when I was filming on the EM5 Mark II? I noticed that there was a lot of focus breathing and also it just hunting for focus the whole time. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> um, you can click my face to subscribe or you can click in one of these corners. I think it's this one. So you can click on my, um, you can click on my Zenity film camera there to um, get a YouTube video that YouTube thinks you might like. Um, Cheers.